Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jennifer Long from Sew a Story. I'm an early childhood educator turned Riley Blake Designs fabric designer. And today I'm gonna to be teaching you a couple tips and tricks from my little witch and friends, Machine Embroidery USB. <laughs> let's get started. So first let's do a little walkthrough of some of the dolls that are included. Now all of the dolls on the Machine Embroidery USBs are three sizes. So they come in 14 inch, 16 inch, and 18 inch dolls, depending on your stitchable area and your hoop size. So all, you need a stitchable area of five by seven, six by 10, or eight by 12. Once you decided what size you want, you can pick your favorite dolls that you wanna make or make them all, and you can mix and match colors and accessories. So let's go through some of them. So first of all, I have a sweet little friend here, and this is Itsy Bitsy Spider. Now, Little Spider has so many fantastic details, including his own little bow that has extra detail of a spider web right on it. We're gonna work through this together today. Of course, there's a Little Witch's hat, so you know he belongs to Little Witch, and he has even little tiny soft fangs at the bottom. If you move on over here, here is Little Witch. So she was having so much fun dressing up. She is wearing the pumpkin face mask right now. You can see she even has pumpkin um, baubles for her hair, for her little braids. She has an in the hoop skirt with excellent detail of spider webs alongside the applique. She has her belt. Look at the details on her body and she has removable boots even. If you pan all the way up, you can see on the top here is her hat. So she is just all ready to go. Moving along beside the hat is the bat doll. And she has so many fun things, including these oversized wings. How do you get those wings in the hoop? You can see inside of the patterns in the Little Witch doll USBs that these wings can actually be done completely in the hoop and fully assembled in the hoop. And then if we move down there, well, we have the two ever popular kitty cats. They have a tail. I might even just pull one out here so I can show you. All right, look at this lovely tail on this kitten. He has a long tail. Look at the detail on the eyes. There's so much wonderful things. There's the little fur details here and the whiskers, the little cute pink nose, of course a collar and a little extra pumpkin there hanging down. There's all kinds of other special details and accessories like a freestanding applique witch's broom. And if you pan all the way over here, there's even a mouse for the kitty dolls. So today we're gonna to talk about this spider and just some of the tips and tricks to get some of those extra 3D details done completely in the hoop. I've printed out and downloaded the instructions for this pattern, but you can find them on your USB. So just make sure you follow along with the instructions. Every machine reads uh, the thread colors differently and the steps. So the steps in here correlate completely with what is on your um, machine. I've already gone ahead and prepped some of the early hoops uh, in this project and I'm just gonna walk you through some of them. So over here, I have the, the bow. So this is the bow here and you've folded it on one side first and then the other and like I said, it's done completely in the hoop. I've even done a little bit of trimming around the edge and cut along the sides. Now all that's left for me to do is to take my favorite pair of hemostats and turn it inside out. I'm gonna do that and you're gonna see this wonderful bow appear with no seams and no edges. I'm gonna show you how to assemble this on the spider in the hoop, but for now we're just gonna get it prepped and ready to go. I'm gonna use my hemostats here and push all the way out on both sides. And you can see that even the back has a finished seam there, right? It's folded nicely, so that's gonna be excellent. And here it goes. I'm just gonna push that corner out one more time so it's perfect. Look how fun it is. I'm using Little Witch fabric um, for this as well. So this is the main print and it's um, lots of fun. This is gonna be the center and this piece was also done in the hoop. Here are the little fangs and they're nicely rounded and again, I clipped all the way around them. So I'll just take my hemostats and turn those out around so we can do that together and get those prepped and ready to go. 
You can always omit any step when you're doing machine embroidery in the hoop. So let's say you didn't want your spider to have fangs, that's okay. You can just pass over that step and um, just not include these in there. So you have the opportunity to be as creative as you want. All right, I've pushed those out. And those little teeth are ready. And this is gonna be the backing and I've pre-prepped the backing as well. I'm gonna move that over here and Spiders have how many legs? <laughs> Eight, but luckily these are short legs so they were quite easy and fun to do. Um, the, you don't need to know which one is right or left because they are the same on all the sides, but they are stitched completely in the hoop as well, which does mean that they are all identical. I've left one spider leg here at, unturned and I've clipped it a quarter inch all the way around and then because the whole leg pretty much has uh, curves to it, I have done little snips inside the seam allowance so it's gonna turn nicely. So again, notice how I'm holding my hemostats almost all the time. They are a doll maker's best friend. So there we go, look how easy that was to turn. And I'm gonna push them in there and turn that around, open that up and voila. So I do need to stuff this. I'm just gonna reach over here and get a little bit of stuffing and we'll stuff that together. I wanted to do this part together with you because this is an important tip and trick. Notice how many limbs we're going to be assembling in the hoop. So it is important to know that you should leave a seam allowance that does not have stuffing in it. If you stuff right to the edge, of those spider legs, then your machine will have to stitch over all of that. And your spider's also gonna have very stiff legs. You can see how my little friend here, his legs can move. That's because I did leave some room for them um, to go into the seam allowance. I just need a little bit more stuffing. I like to do just a little bit at a time. I do it really hard at the ends, at the toe. So it's nice and pushed really hard there. And I'm gonna go up just a little bit more Perfect, and just get that in. And then we'll do that eight times, so you have eight legs to go. This is a wonderful thing to do um, while you are visiting, maybe you're on the phone, maybe you're watching your favorite show. I even do this part while I'm stitching the next part. So um, it's kind of a fun thing to do while you're, the next part is stitching ahead. Okay, I've got this one completely pushed in and I've got a nice good quarter to even half inch seam allowance there. Good, I'll put that leg off to the side and I have all of my steps prepped. Now if you wanna come over to the machine here, I'll show you that I have already done a lot of the flat stitching that has happened here. So just like in all of the dolls, I do have the neck seam and you might be wondering why there is a neck seam here when the fabrics are the same well, when you stuff a doll, if they don't have that seam there, um, there can be like gathering that happens in the neck and it can just not have a very even stuffing. That seam allowance at the neck on the doll gives it the strength to hold in those two places so that it kind of bulges at the head and bulges at the body. So it gives a really nice aesthetic. So even if you're using the same fabric for the face and the body, you wanna make sure that it is, um, you do have that seam allowance in there. And I've stitched the, the face first. We're gonna go on here to step nine when we insert this bow. So I'm gonna flip over to my instructions. So I'm always following along with myself and the instructions even though my machine tells me what step to do. So on number nine is a placement stitch for my bow. So I'm using a orange thread to start just so I can really see it. And I am going to stitch out my placement stitch. Excellent. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm just gonna make these nice and flat and even here. I'm gonna trim them off so that both sides are nice and even. This is gonna be my bow holder. Now the bow holder is going to go up and over the face. It feels a little bit backwards, but this placement line is where you want to line up. You wanna line up your bow there and you wanna make sure it's nice and even and straight, your bow holder. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch this out. I'm gonna lower that down.
and there it goes. So whenever I'm sewing something um, in the hoop that's a permanent step, like my tack down, we really try to do a triple stitch there so it's really extra firm. All right, so now we're gonna take this over here and just trim any extra that we have off of there. So you can see there's a little bit of extra here. I'm gonna use my curved applique scissors and just get to it as close as I can. Perfect, and just trim all that off because we're gonna send it back into the machine and we are going to um, do a nice fancy cover stitch over it. So I'll meet you back over at the machine. I'm gonna change my thread color so it matches my spider body. All right, so here we are. I have a black thread that's gonna match my body co color. And I am going to stitch out this really fun and fancy cover stitch on my spider doll here on the bow. So it kind of has a slightly spooky effect. You won't get to see this stitch too much, but you know, it's all in the details. So we wanted to make sure that there was something fun there that covers up this raw edge of your bow holder. And um, it also just adds a little bit of whimsy. So this is the fun part, we'll just get to watch it while it stitches out. Perfect. All right, so the next step here is we're gonna be inserting this bow into that bow holder. So I'm going to bring this out of the hoop again just so I have the most space that I can. Make sure my threads are all clipped at the back. I just like to ne keep a neat and tidy spider. And I am going to use my hemostats for this part again. So I'm gonna slide them through here and I'm just gonna grab a hold of a corner of this bow and just give it a little tug. Here it comes right through. All right, and then release it, and I'm gonna position it in the middle. Oh my goodness, it's so cute! Isn't that just adorable? Wow. So you can make a spider with all kinds of different bows. You could leave it like that and leave this changeable, but I do recommend if this is for children that you do do the next step because that holds this bow into place and um, they can't take it out and it doesn't become a choking hazard. So we're gonna switch the thread to orange so it matches on top and it feels nice and cohesive and we're gonna stitch out that spider web on top. Okay, perfect, let's insert the hoop back in and we're get ready to stitch out step 14, which is this fancy spider web applique on top design. So I'll lower that presser foot and here we go, we're just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna cut my thread here and let it just stitch on top. It's gonna stitch through all the layers and it's gonna hold that nice. Okay, excellent. So now we are gonna go and we're gonna skip through all these next steps. I prepped them all ahead of time so we don't have to do all of the steps and thread color changes for this little witch's hat on the bottom of the spider. So we'll go and, stip, and skip all the way to past step 19 to the action step. So the action step here is to prep this bow. And we're gonna just make sure we're gonna push it in. If you have um, washi tape, you can washi tape it down. If you have a pin, you can even pin it in here. And I'm just gonna step over and grab a pin just to hold it. All right, so here I go. I'm just gonna use a pin to hold it. The one thing I do recommend if you are using a pin here is that when you do go to turn your spider out or any of your doll up that you are very, very careful that you don't poke yourself. So I recommend washi tape, but you can use anything that you want to hold that bow inside. So we have lots of room to put all of these legs around. All right, I'm taking this back to my hoop for the final assembly that in the hoop part of this spider doll. All right, so this next step is gonna show us each spot where each of these limbs, so we have eight arms and legs and our teeth where each of them are going to go. So I'm gonna do it in a contrasting thread um, just so that it's easy to see for you and you're welcome to do the same so that you can easily spot where you need each of those limbs. And here we go. All right. So you're gonna notice that it's gonna give you um, a nice wide spot space for each of the eight legs as it goes around. And 
This machine likes to recenter it here, but they are all continuous. It's just pulling um, the threads from the back so that it has a nice and neat um, area. But you're going to have a spot for each of the eight legs, and we're going to go around the spider in a counterclockwise position, and we're going to put each of the legs down. So we'll just let the machine let the machine run, and we'll be back. All right, so I'm just gonna take this out to give you a nice good look at it, and I just wanna talk through it before we really get started. So I'm really excited to be using this for an example because this doll has so many limbs. So as you can see, there are eight legs here and then also the optional teeth are at the top. As you can notice that there is an angle, a different angle for each leg, and that is to represent, you're gonna try and make it really even with how you are putting that leg down to that. So you don't want to have the leg in a different angle like this than the placement stitch. So you really want to have it parallel and even just running over top of it, as you can see there. So the one thing I do want to say too, before we get with all of those limbs um, inside that hoop space is that on the sample, the sample spider I've made here, you can see that two are going down and two are going up. So I'm just gonna show you the layout for what all eight legs will look like. You won't put them all in at once, we're gonna do them at once, but I just wanna give you an idea of just what kind of space you're working with here. So it's gonna end up looking like this. <laughs> he has two that are going up, these two go up, and these two go down. And this is what he's gonna look like there. And of course, the top one here is those um, little fangs, and they're gonna go in towards him. So when he's done, this is what he's gonna look like, but we're gonna take our time and go through each of these um, on our machine. So I'll put all the legs back, and I'll bring him back over to the machine. Before we get started, I am just gonna switch the thread color here just so that it's gonna match and I'm gonna have it the same as the whole outline of the body. So I'm gonna switch it to black. Perfect, and so now we've just changed the thread here and let's get started on all of these limbs. So I'm gonna put the first one down and if you follow along in your instructions, you can see the angle that it is too, but we just did a little um, trial and placement for that. I'm making sure I'm covering over the cent and centering that placement line and I'm gonna get ready to do my tack down. So we're gonna do the first leg. And again, it's doing that nice triple stitch, so it holds it nice and firm. And we have a lot of that space there so that it won't go over all of the stuffing. Let's work on that second leg. If it's popping out the way that this one is popping out already, I'm just gonna use my finger or you can use your hemostats and just make sure that it's staying in there so you don't have it coming, coming out there. All right, let's put the second one and lap it over. It's gonna overlap just a little bit and that's great. And you're gonna continue this same process all the way around and um, do all of the legs. The next two are gonna be pointing upwards and the teeth are gonna be pointing in just as we practiced. Okay, so we've just finished the first four legs. Two are going up and two are going down. And now we're going to do the teeth. 
So I'm going to put the teeth. You can see you have quite a, a wide range there. And the reason why um, I decided to do that is sometimes you just like to add some character. So if you want to have like the teeth off to the side, I just wanted to be able to give you that option in the hoop. So if you wanted to have kind of like a smirking spider, you can always move it slightly over to one side or the other. For this spider, I'm going to center it here, um, but you're welcome to do either way. So again, you can wash your tape here, or I'm just going to hold my fingers until I get started. Great. Good. And once it gets started, then it's good to go. And we're going to continue with all the other legs on the other side, just the same as this side. All right, so now everything, including that bow, should be laying inside the stitchable area. You can always check that yourself and um, just make sure, but you wanna make sure that all those limbs are pointing inside the neck and nothing will get caught here. So I'm just taking a peek all the way around. Good, and I'll run my fingers around and make sure that nothing will get caught. All right, now is the fun part. Okay, this is the in the hoop part. You're gonna take your backing and you're gonna place it all over. You're welcome to give it pins or washi tape, however you want to have this spider um, positioned. But I am gonna hold, just hold it in place here just so you can see how I would do that as well. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure it's laying, I just wanna make sure my direction of my fabric. This fabric is, a, is just slightly directional and you know, just want to make sure that it's all going in the right direction. Perfect. So here I go. I'm going to start with this and we're just going to start going here and we're going to just give a little bit of pull. If you're, if you're not um, pinning this down, then you just want to make sure you're holding it taut as you go around and that it's laying nice and flat. So you can see it's kind of a little bit bumpy, but you're going to do this one side. And then when we meet back up over here, I'll just show you how to kind of keep pulling it over onto that side. So let's get started. And if you can slow your machine down, you are definitely welcome to do that. I do wanna say if you did put pins down in, um, in this process to hold this down that you don't run over the pins with your embroidery machine. Good. So we're just trying to go for this first side as a nice flat side. We just wanna make sure that it's staying nice and straight and flat. Excellent. Isn't this just magic? It's so exciting. <laughs> oh my goodness, so much fun. All right, and then we're coming right around the other side. And this is where you wanna just don't work against the machine, let the machine guide you. But if you are pulling it, that you are just giving it a little bit of tension on the top fabric only as it's pulling around. You do have a lot of limbs in there. And if, if you don't pull the fabric, it will just be a little chubbier of a spider, which is completely fine. But um, I just wanna make sure it's nice and even on both sides and it stuffs really well. All right, we're almost done. Oh, isn't this a dream? Yay. Okay. Okay, so here is our spider doll. There is a one final step here on the machine and we do not want you to stitch that, that last step. So that last step is number 31 and it has a big stop sign on it. And that stop sign is there so that you don't stitch it out. Lots of times embroidery machines when they're done uh, design, they recenter themselves and come back into the center. Well, things that could happen is your needle could drag across and, and, and make a hole inside of this fabric. So that stop is there to ensure that you don't have that 3D element destroyed. Okay, so here's your spider. All we need to do is take it out of the hoop. I'm gonna set the hoop off to the side. Flip him over. Oh my goodness, he's adorable. And you can start to tear away your stabilizer. So you'll just follow the rest of the directions here. It comes off really nice and easy. Just tear the stabilizer off. This is a really fun and oh so satisfying thing to do. 
and keep coming around here. And you're gonna go through as best as you can and tear all the stabilizer away from the inside. Once everything is torn, then you are gonna go and trim around with your seam allowance, your quarter inch seam allowance. Give him a turn. And then just as you would for any other doll, is you would start stuffing at the top and bring it all the way to the bottom. And then you will have an adorable little spider that you can hang from any doorway in your home and just give a little kiss to. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this fun and quick tutorial on how fast and easy and simple in the hoop doll, is, doll making can be. Again, my name is Jennifer Long from Sew a Story and I'm so grateful to be here. I hope you have a lovely day.